So greetings, it's Mike's from LiveMyAssOff.com. Uh, just checking to see if we're, if we're rolling, which we are. Um, so continuing on with Amazing. Um, so I have this company, and this is about in 2010. And with any organization, right, sort of the, the default setting to instantiate it is you're like, okay, well, I'll come up with a business plan. And in doing so, it's no fun. Uh, in because of course it takes the creative juices and makes you n turn it into an Excel spreadsheet which becomes very dull uh, and emotionless but nonetheless it's important to get uh, profit and loss pretty much spelled out uh, so you can be like oh I should definitely do this or mm, I better not do this otherwise I'll go bankrupt so um, so anyway so as part of that <clears throat> I discovered that uh, along the way, you know, you're like, okay, well, what's my niche going to be? What's my niche, however you want to pronounce it? Um, and based on my my personal background, my personal experience, my uh, assessment of like where I could add the most value, um, and where I might actually, you know, be able to market my services, uh, because I can't just like walk into a swap meet and say, hey, I'm a life coach. Great, and people line up and they all pay me, you know, five hundred dollars an hour or a dollar an hour or whatever I wanted to charge. So anyway, so for me, um, it was focusing on people that were in the uh, entertainment industry uh, that were in recovery, specifically recovery from drugs and alcohol. I'm not a physical therapist. <laughs> um, but so I had this executive leadership degree and I had my experience of, at the time, being uh, 18 years sober. I think that's right. Uh, seven years ago, yeah. So. Um, Anyway, so I, I started out on that, and, and, and the entertainment industry part comes from the fact that I had spent about 20 years in radio, 10 years of which, um, the last 10 years of which I was in uh, Southern California, um, St. Louis, so top 25 markets, um, and as part of that, interfaced and, and was able to do like some killer concerts, um, and so you end up, you know, working with these people who are visible, uh, names that you hear, they're household words, if you will, right? And so you soon discover that these people are a couple things, and you probably heard people describe stars as this. They're just like you and I. They're regular people. Now, that's not completely inaccurate, um, but they do have uh, the ability to be absolutely exceptional in one fairly specific craft. And so one of those is either being you know, a rock star or a movie star or a producer or whatever. Uh, and so where I would sort of focus is traditionally people that were in the uh, entertainment industry as it relates to music uh, because of my background in radio, but then of course being in Southern California, uh, it sort of dovetails into um, people who are also uh, in the movies. And um, I can tell you that uh, those people, their lives are, how do I, uh, I'll, put, I'll throw this label out there, not real in the sense that the amount of money they make um, is, uh, it doesn't really register because they do this craft because they love it. Um, and so when they get paid $100,000, that's great. When they get paid $100 million, they're like, okay, that's cool too. Um, <laughs> but uh, what happens when you have an increasing level of popularity, then you have an increasing level of judgment. <laughs> Uh, by the world and so you get you get love mail and you get hate mail and the hate mail can wear on you and if you've heard or seen interviews or whatever or talk to any of these people that are very visible the successful ones meaning they're pretty comfortable in their own skin uh, they will traditionally make some statement like I don't pay any attention to the tabloids and that's accurate um, that's one of probably the top five bullets that you'll uh, hear those people use to be successful because otherwise you can get so um, beaten down or distracted certainly uh, by others who um, make comments about you or stories that are written about you that are 100% false uh, and that gets very frustrating because it's like you can't stand in the line at the grocery store as that person and uh, <laughs> say it loud enough to be able to combat the distraction that is caused by, let's say, the National Enquirer, for example. Um, you can't do it. And even if you do, people are more apt and more want, they have more of a desire to believe something bad said about someone who is 
incredibly popular or incredibly attractive or incredibly wealthy than if it's like, oh no, this person is a regular person and they actually just went with their mom to the beach on Sunday. Well, that's not interesting, right? If they raped seven babies and got completely shit-faced this weekend and drove into a schoolyard, well, that's interesting somehow and that sells whatever. Um, so, those people, sadly, uh, a lot of times to escape and to be able to deal with reality, uh, they turn to drugs and alcohol. And so I can personally relate to that and so I can provide and have provided some degree of um, camaraderie as it relates to understanding that, having apathy is apathy, having empathy, I have no, I have apathy, yeah, whatever, just deal with it, having empathy as well as sympathy, um, as well as shared experience. And so, from that came the niche of working with people who are in recovery from drugs and alcohol. And uh, while I labeled it in the entertainment industry, that was the initial one, but it soon turned into those people that are visible. And by that I mean CEOs and that sort of thing of various companies that if they um, publicly make a mistake, their stock price can plummet. And so proactively working with those people and saying, you know, this scenario you described to me, that behavior could be possibly very destructive. <laughs> Not just to your marriage, but uh, your shareholders might get pissed here pretty soon. Um, or, and sadly, as traditionally is the case, it would be very reactive, meaning, hey, you probably shouldn't have done that, but since you have, let's do this this way. Um, and so, so that was pretty cool. Now, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and like name drop and share with you the people that I worked with, and quite frankly, 90% of them, you'd be like, who? Um, so it's, it's not relevant and it really doesn't add a whole lot of validity to, to what I did and what I still continue to do. I just do it for fun and for free now. <laughs> um, but did it as an additional income several years ago. Uh, so anyway, so that was pretty cool. And, I'll, and so I'll end with this, is that along the way, I learned that um, the need for people to have a best or a series of best friends is important. Yeah, no kidding, Mike, right? Blanket label, my God, you charge $675 an hour for that? No, let me tell you what I learned is that the definition of friend for me and for those that I felt were successful, I'll just say it, that it is someone in your life that is willing to save your ass before they're willing to save your face. They're more interested in making sure that you are safe and happy and content and okay and being truthful with yourself and others around you than they are about covering up any dysfunctional behavior. And if you're really lucky, <laughs> they'll call you out on the dysfunctional behavior and say that is absolutely unacceptable based on the relationship that we have and I know your values and your morals and your desires. You're completely going against who you are and you think you should do it because other people say you should. You're not being true to yourself. I am your friend. I will hold you accountable to be that person that you say you are, to be that person of values and to be that person of honesty and integrity, if that's what you choose to do. Um, and, uh, and being able to identify that kind of person in your life, especially in the sphere of people that are in the entertainment industry, is kind of difficult. Uh, because there are a lot of people that are out for their own hidden agenda, which traditionally is relative to financial success. And not necessarily helping you or, or, or your friends be um, emotionally and spiritually successful. And so that was a really big learning. So I'll just leave you with the fact that my definition of friend We'll just, uh, as a quick one, say it's someone who's definitely willing to save your ass before they're willing to save your face. Someone who will truly call you on your shit, if you will. Um, and to the best of my ability, I try and surround myself with those people. Um, I have a lot of acquaintances, for sure, as I'm sure you do, but I gotta tell you, when I'm honored to welcome someone in my life as a friend, and hopefully be one to them, it's like, it's like no other drug in the world, dude. It's the best thing ever. It's the best thing going. And uh, those people that you can call at 2 in the afternoon and 2 in the morning and they just pick up the phone. And you don't need to lead with, oh, dude, I'm so sorry, it's really early in the morning. <laughs> you don't need to do that nonsense when you're talking to a friend. You call them up and they answer. And whether verbally or emotionally, they respond with, hello, what can I do for you? Um, and that was a whole lot of learning, you know? Um, so anyway, so that was my first, that's my first sort of installment. I'll, I'll continue with these as I do my laundry, my very sophisticated laundry system, which involves buckets of quarters right now. 
uh, because my dryer is being repaired or replaced, actually. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the level of success I've reached. I do my own laundry <laughs> at a laundromat. Um, it's kind of cool, actually. I don't mind it because I tell you, I meet people that I don't normally see. Like, the, they don't work in higher ed. They don't work in IT. They don't go to the conferences I go to. Um, and they probably live 30 feet down the street in Coronado. So it's neat. I get to interface with people that I normally wouldn't. So it's a good opportunity. Anyway, it's Mike from LiveMyAssOff.com saying I hope you're living the dream. Because trust me, if you're not living the dream, you're doing it wrong. Ciao. Thank you.